Hello everyone, my name is Tara, otherwise known as Candy Mama, and a couple months ago I did a video about my backpacker morning routine and how that evolved over a five and a half month through hike. Today I wanted to do a follow up to that video and go over my backpacker nightly routine, what that looks like while I'm backpacking alone, and what that looks like when I'm backpacking with my partner, Jonathan. Along the way I'm also going to share some of my favorite nightly backpacker routine pro tips that I think might help you guys. Before we get into that, I'd like to ask you guys to please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those bell notifications. It only takes a click on y'all's end to help and encourage creators like me. As always, thank you for the support. I do also have some social medias if you want to keep up with me on my day to day. I have Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As soon as I got to a designated campsite or an established stealth spot, I would immediately find a place for my tent and place my pack there. There are a couple things I look for when I am choosing the best tent spot. Firstly, I avoid camping in low areas surrounded by higher ground. If a storm rolls in, you will most likely be waking up with an indoor pool, which we do not want that. Second, before I set up my tent, I also look above and I look for any widow makers uh, hanging dead branches or dead trees that could fall down if there was a strong wind onto my tent. We also don't want that. Lastly, always follow the leave no trace principles. That means never camp closer than 200 feet from a water source and try to always set up at an existing campsite if possible. After finding the perfect spot, I would start setting up my tent if there is a strong wind, I try to set my tent up on the broad side, so the broad side is facing the wind. Reason being is the broad side has the strongest pull system and can withstand stronger winds uh, compared to the smaller, more narrow side of your tent. After setting up my tent, I set up my bedding as soon as possible, so that means sleeping pad, sleeping bag, and if there's a camp pillow that I'm using, I just like to roll into my sleeping bag as soon as I'm done with the chores for the night. There are so many benefits of having a partner go with you on these backpacking trips. Not only are you sharing the weight of a tent, cook system, and other smaller items, but you're also sharing the chores. While my husband, Sheriff, and I were on our Appalachian Trail through hike, we would set up the tent together because it was just faster that way. After that, one of us would set up uh, both of our sleeping pad, bags, and pillows. Simultaneously, the other would filter some water, then start cooking dinner. If we timed it just right, as soon as the bedding was done in the tent, dinner would be all ready. Whenever I'm backpacking alone and after I've made up my bed in my tent, I would go down to the water source and slowly filter water and decompress from the day. So this was just my time to kind of relax and you know listen to trickling water. So slowly I would filter water for dinner, nightly swigs, and breakfast, and then I'd also be washing my hands at the water source and washing off my legs. So I really wish I was more creative during dinner time and made some elaborate uh, protein dense meals, but usually at the end of the night I just wanted something fast and salty. Most of the times I would just get the cheap pasta or rice sides you can get at pretty much any grocery store. A couple other through hiker staples are um, spam and ramen, very, very salty, um, but I loved it. Uh, also, I would do ramen bombs, so that's mashed potatoes and ramen together. Um, and then if I was feeling fancy, I would do mac and cheese, but for me, I wouldn't do the powdered cheese. I really liked the goopy cheese. So it's hard to clean up, but that was a real treat to get the goopy mac and cheese. A couple of pro tips for easy cleanup during dinner is to put your rice or your pasta nor side in a reflective sleeve. I'll have a picture right here, but you can buy these online or make your own. So this just keeps all of the heat in while the boiling water is in this package. Because at this point, um, you're gonna put your pasta side in there and then you're gonna pour boiling water into the rice or pasta side packaging and seal it up and then seal the reflective package over that so it cooks the pasta. Uh, so essentially, again, that reflective piece just keeps all the heat in so it cooks the pasta or rice quicker. I mean, this method won't always come out perfect, but you do save a lot of fuel and you save a lot of time as well. So something I've done since pretty much I started backpacking, I think it was like eight years. Uh, let's see, 2014 is when I went on my first backpacking trip. Yeah, eight years. So something I've been doing a lot ever since I really started backpacking 
was drinking tea, um, usually on like shorter hikes. I didn't do this during my through hike, but usually on shorter backpacking trips while I was guiding in the Smoky Mountains, I would drink tea, um, you know, the sleepy time tea you get at the most grocery stores. Um, but I would drink either of these. That just helped me decompress a little more and it also got me a little sleepy for bedtime. Sometimes it's a little harder to fall asleep. So I would drink these and then after I drank these, I would take the um, tea bag out of the hot water and I would actually like dab it on my face. Um, the hot water was really nice and soothing. I like to think it kind of like washed my face a little bit. After eating dinner and drinking my tea, I would brush my teeth and start collecting items to put in the bear bag or the bear can. So that includes anything really that smells, but that could be snack wrappers from your pack. Uh, that could be cooking gear, sunscreen, toothpaste, really just anything that smells. This next step is dependent on what season you're backpacking in and I guess what time of day you've stopped hiking. Uh, if you have any daylight to wait until after dinner, you can hang your bear line then. Uh, I just like to make sure I'm not waiting until it's dark to hang my bear line because that adds an extra challenge. I like to just be aware of how much daylight I have left and that helps me determine if I should hang my bear line first thing when I get to camp or if I should just wait until after dinner. Most people hang their food from a tree to keep away from bears unless you're camping in an area that does require a bear can, which um, you know I've hiked on the John Muir Trail and they do require a bear can there. But on our Appalachian Trail through hike, we exclusively used a bear hang. A proper bear hang should be 200 feet from your camp, 10 feet from the ground, and six feet from the tree. I have had the most success in hanging a bear line when I've tied a small rock to the end of a piece of paracord, and then I use an underhand throw that simply arcs over the tree branch that I want to get it over. I've had the least amount of success when I twirl the rock and the piece of paracord and throw it up there. Usually at that time, it kind of like wraps around and then it's impossible to get it down. Uh, also, before you throw your bear line, make sure you're holding the other end of the rope because I've done that several times too where I've thrown and the whole rope's going up with it. So make sure you're holding the end of the rope there. This may sound complicated, and if it does to you, I'd recommend an ursac. This is a bear-resistant bag you tie to a low branch, or a bear canister. It's essentially a hard plastic bear-resistant container. Uh, there are definitely pros and cons of both of these methods. Once all of the smelly items are hung up in a tree or in the bear can, it's time to get to bed. I collect all the items that I've probably strewn about camp and bring them to my tent. So my trail runners, my pack, and my hiking socks live in the vestibule. And I also unzip all the zippers on my pack. So if a mouse does somehow find its way to my pack, it can go in and out and explore my pack freely without having to chew through. Because they will chew through your pack. That's happened to me before. So I unzip everything so they can go come and go as they please. I know that sounds gross, but it's better than having them chew through your pack and then go, come and go as they please. So I tend to organize everything in my tent the same way wherever I'm backpacking. So my headlamp, my knife, and any of my electronics kind of live near my head area or in like a mesh pocket near my head. And then any dirty hiking clothes live at my feet at the other side of the tent. Wherever and whenever I'm backpacking, I always do a thorough tick check. It's easier with a partner, but if you are alone, the best way to check for ticks in the hard to see areas is by using your camera phone. Just make sure you delete the pictures or videos later. The last thing I do before bed is do a little video editing, write about my day in my iPhone notes, and plan the next day's hike by looking at mileage, water sources, and really nice lunch spots. Then it's time to go to bed. I still get a little scared every time I'm backpacking alone, and I think that's just inevitable. Um, some things I do to get a restful night's sleep, though, is use earplugs. Uh, many times I've heard what I thought to be a bear walking around our camp, and it ends up being like a little, little squirrel or a little porcupine, nothing to worry about. But these days I just use earplugs, so I don't even have to worry about any of those little crunching leaves around my tent. Something I learned on my first ever backpacking trip in 2014 was how to feel natural in nature. So essentially what I mean by that is I reassure myself when I'm out there backpacking is I am part of nature and I am in my element right now. Like 
any animal is having a restful night's sleep, a deer, a bear, uh, what, whatever animals in the woods right now around me trying to get a restful night's sleep, I'm also trying to get a restful night's sleep. We're all part of nature just trying to go to sleep. If I've done everything right, like hang my bear bag and camp in a non-invasive area, no animals should be by, and if they are, they're just curious to see what's going on. Last thing I tell myself is that I am safer out here in nature backpacking than I would be sleeping in a hotel in a city. The chances of running into somebody with ill intentions on the trail are very slim. Um, though it does happen, the chances are lower than running into somebody with ill intentions in the city. All right, y'all, that was it for my nightly backpacker routine. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was short and simple, but I just wanted to have a follow-up to my morning backpacker routine. If you haven't watched that one, I will link it above, so definitely check that out. I encourage you guys to comment below if you have a nightly routine that works for you really well. If you did watch the end, please comment a, uh, I don't even know what to call this, a ZZZ emoji. Uh, this would just let me know that you watched the end and I will say hello in the comments. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and happy hiking.